जिंदा है तो जिंदगी ये जीत में यकीन कर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है तो जिंदगी ये जीत में यकीन कर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है ये हम के और चार दिन से दम के और चार दिन ये दिन भी जाएंगे गुजर गुजर गए हजार दिन ये हम के और चार दिन से दम के और चार दिन ये दिन भी जाएंगे गुजर गुजर गए हजार दिन कभी तो होगी इस चमन पे भी बाहर की नजर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है तो जिंदगी ये जीत में यकीन कर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है सुबह शाम के रंगे हुए गगन को झूम कर तो सुन जमीन गा रही है कब से झूम झूम कर सुबह शाम के रंगे हुए गगन को झूम कर तो सुन जमीन गा रही है कब से झूम झूम कर दुआ मेरा श्रृंगार कर दुआ मुझे हसीन कर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है तो जिंदगी ये जीत में यकीन कर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है हजार बेश धर के आई मौत तेरे द्वार पर मगर तुझे न चल सकी चली गई वो हार कर हजार बेश धर के आई मौत तेरे द्वार पर मगर तुझे न चल सकी चली गई वो हार कर नई सुबह के संग सदा तुझे मिली नई उम्र अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है तो जिंदगी जीत में यकीन कर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है हमारे कारवा को मंजिलों का इंतजार है ये आंधियों ये आंधियों की पीठ पर सवार है हमारे कारवा को मंजिलों का इंतजार है ये आंधियों ये बिजलियों की पीठ पर सवार है दुआ कदम मिला के चल चलेंगे एक साथ हम अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है तो जिंदगी ये जीत में यकीन कर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है जमी के पेट में पली अगन पले है जलजले रुके न टिक सकेंगे वो उपभोग के स्वराज में जमी के पेट में पली अगन पले है जलजले रुके न टिक सकेंगे वो उपभोग के स्वराज में मुसीबतों के सर कुचल बढ़ेंगे एक साथ हम मगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है तो जिंदगी ये जीत में यकीन कर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है बुरी है आग पेट की बुरे है दिल के दाग ये न दब सकेंगे एक दिन बनेंगे इनकलाब ये बुरी है आग पेट की बुरे है दिल के दाग ये न दब सकेंगे एक दिन बनेंगे इनकलाब ये गिरेंगे जुल्म के पहल बनेंगे फिर नवीन घर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है तो जिंदगी ये जीत में यकीन कर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है यकीन कर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है तो जिंदगी ये जीत में यकीन कर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तो जिंदा है ये हम के और चार दिन से दम के और चार दिन ये दिन भी जाएंगे गुजर गुजर गए हजार दिन ये गम के और चार दिन से दम के और चार दिन ये दिन भी जाएंगे गुजर गुजर गए हजार दिन कभी तो होगी इस चमन पे भी बाहर की नजर अगर 
and gentlemen, friends and colleagues. My name is Uta Lehmann, and I'm the director of the School of Public Health. Um, we still have people joining, but I think we will start now. Welcome to the 2021 celebration of the Jake Scarville Award. It's the second celebration this year because we had the 2020 celebrations in July of this year. So very lucky that we have two in one year. Um, the slides that you have just seen um, have introduced the awardee already. Um, I want to share with you um, the explanation that um, Sulakshna gave us about the um, about the song that has accompanied the slideshow. Um, so. She told us um, this, slide, this song is written by Shailendra, uh, born in Rawalpindi of, in current Pakistan. He was an active Indian people's, active in the Indian People's Theatre Association and wrote numerous songs for the Indian freedom movement and theatre movement. Um, prior, to, prior to entering films. To Zindahai is one of them, and it is called, it is a call to action to act together to change and believe that we will win. It is a much sung song among progressive movements in India. And the two, first two lines translated into if you're alive, believe in the victory of life. If there are heavens somewhere, bring them down to earth, which I think is a very beautiful and appropriate song for this evening's proceedings. Um, before I um, welcome people, I want to start with just a few housekeeping um, rules. Um, let me just. So, firstly, to say we will be recording the session, and it's also being live streamed on on Facebook. Um, if you don't, uh, let us know if you have a problem um, with it being recorded, and we will take note of that. Um, please mute yourself unless you're speaking and also put your um, put your camera on when you speak, but otherwise put the cam and the, the videos off um, to save bandwidth on those who don't have uh, for those who don't have as much bandwidth. Um, we invite you to post messages and questions and comments to Sulakshna in the in the chat. And we will hopefully have opportunity to, for participants to raise questions, contribute, uh, contribute, and so on after the awardee speech and the panelists' inputs. Um, we are deliberately conducting this event in Zoom meeting rather than in webinar mode because it um, helps us cr create a sense of community, which we don't have when we are in webinar mode. And I think particularly in these times, that's really, really important. Um, so even if it comes at the expense of sometimes a bit of disruption when somebody is unmuted, I think it's really important. Um, secondly, I think we cannot have events of this kind at the moment we are without remembering the tumultuous and for many people traumatic times we are living in. And so I want to Firstly, acknowledge the incredible work that our health workers, managers, policymakers, and also community members and activists have done over the past year and a half and continue to do in looking after those who are sick or who are in need um, and to do everything they can to pre 
protect us from disease through prevention and vaccination, um, the health workers and managers, and many other forms of, of support um, coming in, happening in communities um, and through community activists and the community members. Um, this includes many of those who are present today, and it also includes the awardee we are celebrating this evening. Um, we salute and thank all of you. I also want to remember the health workers, colleagues, friends, and family we have lost to the pandemic. And I want us to always be aware of the millions in this country and in other countries around the world whose lives and liv livelihoods are precarious or at risk um, at the moment and have been for a very long time. Not only because of the pandemic, but also because of the, the politics, power, poor governance, and the continuing and accelerating greed, both internationally and locally. And so the battle for greater equity and social justice has never been more urgent and more important than it is um, now. Um, and now I want to extend a few welcomes um, to the representatives of the Herbal family, to Diana Yach from the Mauerberger Foundation, to the Dean, Professor, Professor Anthea Rode, and uh, colleagues from the University Executive. Um, I see our rector is, is at the event tonight. To our alumni, friends, and colleagues, um, to several of the previous awardees who are online tonight, uh, to colleagues and friends from the People's Health Movement, both nationally and internationally. It's very nice to see some international colleagues um, in the room, as it were. And of course, most importantly, welcome to our awardee tonight, Dr. Sulakshna Nandi, who is uh, the co-chair of the People's Health Movement uh, Global Steering Committee and the national co-convener of uh, the People's Health Movement India. She's also the Chhattisgarh State Convener of, public, of the Public Health Resource Network, which is a national non-governmental network for research, advocacy, and capacity building in public health. Um, before I hand over to the Dean to welcome everybody, just a few words uh, on the order of play tonight. So the Dean will welcome you just now, then we will have a short video um, reminding us of who um, Professor Jack Schraubel was, in whose name um, this, this award is dedicated. We will then have an introduction of the awards by um, Ms. Yach. Um, Professor Helen Schneider will then read the citation. Uh, then uh, Sulakshna Nandi will address us. And then we have inputs from two renowned panelists um, who I will introduce later, and then engagement with all of you. Um, I'd encourage you to put your um, questions and comments in the, in the chat. Um, but also to feel free and encouraged to um, raise your hand later when we get to that and speak to the panelists, speak to the awardee and have some engagement with each other um, during the event. Um, with that, uh, I would like to hand over to uh, Professor uh, Anthea Rode, who is the Dean of the Faculty of Community and Health Sciences at UWC. Thank you, Uta. Thank you, Prof. Lehman. Good evening, everybody. As the Dean of the Faculty, I want to echo Uta's words as we reflect on the times that we are in. Um, and I would also like to acknowledge everyone that is online this evening. Um, special word of welcome to our awardee, special guest this evening, Dr. Nandi, um, the University Executive and Senior Management, and then our colleagues from our external partners, specifically the Western Cape Department of Health and our colleagues from the HEIs in the Western Cape. Welcome to you all. Also to our colleagues at UWC and within the faculty, um, as well as in different faculties. The family and friends of the late Professor Herbal, as well as the Mauerberger Foundation. Um, it is so good and great to have all of you with us this evening as we virtually have a celebration in honor of the late Professor Harwell. As we reflect on 
Engage Scholarship, which is the topic of the key note address this evening, I would like to share just briefly on how the faculty of Community and Health Sciences at UWC apply our academic scholarly work through our engagement efforts with communities and our other stakeholders. We do this via faculty outreach activities, which includes a multidisciplinary team of both students and staff responding to the health needs of communities such as Fasantakral, Renatendal, and Mitchell's Plain, just to mention a few. These activities are based on what we identify or were identified as health priorities and most recently included, for example, a care for the carer initiative in the Mitchell's Plain area, as well as vaccination drives in both the Bowel CBD and for Santa Carl communities. In addition to these faculty-based activities, our engagement with communities include the work integrated learning activities our students engage with across the Western Cape. These activities are conducted within a primary healthcare approach and does include preventative, promotive, rehabilitative and curative services. These engagements not only afford the students the opportunity to apply what they have learned in the classroom, but also informs the curriculum and helps us to transform our curriculum and apply innovative approaches. In the context of scholarly community engagement, many of our academics and postgraduate students engage in research which, are, which is based in the communities. And so focusing on ensuring that our research has social impact, we are engaging on a social innovation lab soon. As I conclude, I'd like to congratulate Dr. Nandi on receiving her award. And I'm looking forward to hearing how we as a faculty could expand on our community engagement activities in order to facilitate health equity. I thank you. So and also importantly reminding us of the really important work that the faculty has been doing is doing um, in the area of engaged um, scholarship in many many parts of the western cape um jack jake's travel is probably best known as director general in the presidency under nelson mandela that's how most of them most, most of us know him, and as one of South Africa's great intellectuals and thinkers. Um, but for us at UWC and at the School of Public Health in particular, um, his most important role and legacy is as the vice chancellor who turned UWC from a so-called Bush College and apartheid institution for the for so-called coloreds into a vibrant space of engagement and scholarship, an intellectual home of the left. He provided visionary leadership and steered UWC through turbulent times. And he laid the foundation for the School of Public Health. Uh, and for that reason, I thought it would be good to be reminded of his role. So here's a short video about his role, which we played <laughs> during the, the July um, celebration as well. Uh, but at that time, the video didn't work. So hopefully this time we won't only get the sound, but also the, uh, the visuals. Um, Tammy, could I ask you to play the video now? Jake Scherbo described as a humble leader, academic and businessman of note. His life was celebrated in a variety of ways which included art, music, literature and film. A number of debates and lectures were also held throughout the day. Kharval is known for leading from the back, but well-known photographer Rashid Lombard managed to capture the late professor in critical moments in the volatile 1980s. Out of the vast archives, I tried to find him in certain places. And as you can see, the, he's there, but the caption is about that moment in time. And I think it's so important that these moments only come once. And if it's not captured, it's gone. 
Uh, that's why I always tell people, use your camera and capture a moment in time, be it of children or family. So, you know, and this is my tribute to him. Um, and from, I'm donating it to his wife, Phoebe, and to the foundation. And this will go into his house in Somerset East. While Gerwel was remembered for his impeccable work in the political realm and in society, to his family, he was a loving husband and father. Was my relationship with him, um, our greatest bond was just being able to talk about what was going on in the world and to share life in, in the context of cricket. I mean, that was the one bond that we shared for most of our lives. Gerwel died in November 2012. But his legacy and the immense contribution he played in society lives on. Nomao Tusarwandle, SABC News, Cape Town. Op 5 juni 1987 wordt hij director en vicekanselier van de Universiteit van de Westkaap. In zijn intrede heeft hij beklemd toen dat die universiteit onder zijn leiding toegewijd zal wees aan die waardes van kritische onerig ingesteldheid. Indien die instand hier teen politisch of ideologisch van aard is, zal hij dit als opvoeder en administrateur met zijn volle hart teen staan. De UWK zou een leier in die strijd worden teen apartheid. Zijn grootste bijdrage tot die transformatie van Zuid-Afrika was die jaren wat hij aan IWK was. Het is waar die groot of, uh, rol wat hij gespeeld heeft, was daar. Want dit was die begin in, uh, van uh, een proces waarin die universiteit een, een beslissende rol, tot een groot mate een beslissende rol gespeeld heeft in die, uh, die veranderingen wat in Zuid-Afrika plaatsgevind het. En daarin was het hij een baie fundamentele rol gespeeld. UWK als etnische universiteit het een andere richting ingeslaan als wat die overheden daar die tijd voor de universiteit in gedachten gehad het. Dit zou vernieuwing tafel te brengen. Ik denk mensen dat onthou UWK dikwijls voor die optochten en die studenten opstanden en die meer. Ik denk eigenlijk waar meer aan die intellectuele bijdrage wat die universiteit gemaakt het. Die ik het um, op een slag en hij periode genoemd dat men graag wil zien UWK als een intellectual home of the left. UWK was niet net de plek waar vrijheid verskans was nie. Ook die plek waar die toekomst beplan is. Je weet wat die intellectuele gesprek was, was, was woelig, het was um, levendig, het was uitdagend. En, uh, ja nee, UWK was baie beslissig. Een belangrijke stem en een belangrijke rol spelen. Feit is, als je nou maar denkt aan die grondwet na 1990, het ons die voorrecht gehad om een klomp um, of een hele paar um, struggle intellectuals bij de universiteit te krijgen. Mensen zoals Kader Asman, Albi Sachs, Dalla Omar, Zola Squihia. Een hele klomp daar in onze community law center kom uh, werk, klas via en navorsing doen. En heel wat van die werk rondom die grondwet is daar gedoen, daar uit die WK uitgekomen. Um, so ja, nee, het is een baie belangrike rolspeler. Thanks a lot. It's always amazing to remember these times. And it's a, it continues to be a great privilege to have been part of these times, like some of us in the room. So this award honors and recognizes Jake Schervel's central role in promoting public health practice um, and uh, the, his vision for public health and the need for public health training um, in the early 1990s. Um, and his vision um, laid the, the ground for the establishment for initially the tiny public health program, which is transformed now into the well-established um, School of Public Health. And I hope that he would be proud of what we have achieved over the years. 
Um, so with this history in mind, it's entirely appropriate that the, the Jake Schauhel Award in Public Health acknowledges uh, graduates from the School of Public Health who have through their work made an impact on public health um, professional academic leadership and innovation in different ways. And we are deeply grateful to the Mauerberger Foundation who have been endowing this award annually since 2013. And with that, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Diana Yach from the Mauerberger Foundation to say a few words about the award. Thank you. Hello. Can you hear me? Can hear you? Can you? Oh, do you want my face? If possible, we would love your face. Okay, I'll try. Uh, oh, aha, uh -huh. okay. There you are. Thank you. Um, can you, am, am I audible and You visible? are audible and visible, yes, thank you. Fantastic. Um, I think that I feel humbled being part of this gathering. Um, frankly, the Foundation Fund, the Moorberger Foundation Fund, which was established by my grandfather as early as 1936, um, has deep roots and UWC is, has a very special place in our heart. And this is about making social justice real. And I, I don't want to say very much more than that because Uta and um, others have already expressed the fact that um, the Moorberger Foundation Fund and friendship with the Harewell family goes back many, many years. And in fact, Jakes was a, a valued member of the Moorberger Foundation Fund um, as ex officio vice chancellor or rector for the University of the Western Cape. I just wanted to say that I, I, I was doing some reading and to me, this is a world based on the new bottom line. And a new bottom line is one that judges success of every sector, system and institution of our society, whether it's economy, government, schools, healthcare, legal system, based not on the old bottom line of whether they maximize money, profit and power, but instead by the extent to which they maximize love and caring, kindness and generosity, empathy, compassion, social, economic and environmental justice, peace and nonviolence, and the protection of a life support system of our planet, as well as encourages us to transcend a narrow utilitarian approach to nature and other human beings, and enhance our capacity with awe to respond with wonder to the universe and to see the sacred in others and all sentient human beings. This is about focusing on the well being of the planet, all of us, as well as justice and peace over money, profit, and power caring for each other and caring for the planet. Um, I, I just wanted to throw that out because it's in that spirit that I welcome um, the awardee, Dr. Nandi, and thank her for her phenomenal work towards um, a better planet and a more enhanced well-being of our communities. Thank you. Thanks so much, Diana. Um, thanks for your special welcome to Sulakshna. Um, could I now ask my colleague Helen Schneider to introduce Sulakshna to you, to everybody. Good evening, colleagues, friends, comrades. I'm delighted to introduce Sulakshna Nandi to you. Sulakshana trained as a social worker 
and was part of a cohort of Indian activists in the People's Health Movement who chose to do postgraduate training in public health at UWC, a link supported and encouraged by the late Professor David Sanders. Sulakshana completed both her master's in public health, cum laude, and PhD at the School of Public Health. Over the past 20 years, Sulakshana has been a leader of non-governmental social mobilizations on issues of health, gender, food security, and socioeconomic rights in India. In 2006, she was a founding member of Chopal, a resource agency that has played a critical role in supporting community-based organizations through research capacity building and advocacy. She also played a major part in the development of the globally recognized, recognized Mitanin program, a community health worker program in Chhattisgarh state, providing key inputs into the design of training modules and supporting its implementation. The Mitanin program provided the template for the subsequent development of India's nationwide accredited social health um, activist um, CHW program and Sulakshana is currently a member of the national mentoring team for this program. Sulakshana is an internationalist. Her um, activism goes well beyond India. In 2019, she was elected co-chair of PHM's Global Steering Council. Um, PHM, the People's Health Movement, brings together grassroots health activists, civil society organizations, and academic institutions from 70 countries around the world, particularly from the global south. PHM has been a critically important and influential um, global voice for a socially just vision of health and healthcare, especially relevant in the face of powerful neoliberal discourses in the field referred to as global health. Sulakshana's activist themes have informed her, her scholarship in a mutually beneficial manner. Her MPH mini thesis dissertation evaluated the role of the Mitanins in tackling the complex and socially determined challenges of nutrition and gender-based violence. While she was completing this research, Sulakshana became increasingly involved in national debates on a publicly funded health insurance scheme called RSBY to subsidize care in India's private hospital sector. She chose this as a topic for her PhD because, as she wrote, living and working in Chhattisgarh with indigenous community as RSBY unfolded, I was a witness to exactly what was and was not happening under the newly initiated PF, um, scheme. In the community where I worked, poor families were being frequently and arbitrarily excluded from the scheme or were unable to utilize the scheme due to various reasons. In the better off areas, people were getting hospitalized, apparently unnecessarily, for simple conditions. The gap between my observations of the irrelevance of RSBY, at least in the tribal areas where I was working, and public pronouncements touting Chattisgarh as being one of the best performing states under RSBY made me want to find out more. Selection's PhD entitled, is entitled Equity, Access and Utilization in the State-Funded Universal Health Scheme in Chattisgarh State, India, the implications for universal health coverage. Through a series of empirical studies in Chattisgarh State, she demonstrated the failure of the scheme to achieve its goals of improved affordability, access and equity of health care. Her four PhD papers raise important questions on the value of such financing models for advancing the globally advocated UHC, universal health coverage, particularly in the context of a highly commercialized private health sector, and provide lessons for other countries, including South Africa, embarking on similar reforms. Her doctoral work has enabled her to influence the direction of health system reforms in Chattisgarh State, while also positioning her as a national health system expert in India. Through her lifelong commitment to advancing social justice, combined with a thirst for knowledge, Sulakshana thus epitomizes the meaning of engaged or activist scholarship in health. She described this positioning in her PhD thesis as follows. I have explicitly framed my role as a researcher in solidarity work with social movements. Being an insider to the issues has lent strength to my research. It helped me to develop a comprehensive understanding about PFHI 
these insurance schemes and identify its various facets. Working in Chattisgarh State has helped me to develop trusting relationships with marginalized groups and engage them in research. Being an activist scholar requires skills, requires social skill. Traversing diverse local, national and international worlds, forms of communication and action and research. Sulakshan is equally at ease in international scientific conferences as in engaging state policymakers or participating in the everyday struggles of local communities in being part of writing teams that publish in top mainstream journals, while also developing rights-based advocacy materials for rural NGOs. In all these regards, Sulakshana represents the best of what the School of Public Health strives, strives to achieve in its postgraduate programs. She remains a loyal alumna of the school, eager to give back, participating in seminars and PhD webinars, She's without a doubt a worthy recipient of the Jakes Hadwell Award in Public Health. Thank you. Thanks so much, Helen. And with that, I hand over to Sulakshna. Yeah, hello everyone. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Helen, for the citation. And uh, of course, the School of Public Health and UWC for um, this award um, along with uh, the Marburger Foundation and Ms. Diane, yeah, uh, thanks a lot. And I'm really honored, uh, you know, to receive uh, this award. And I really need to say at the beginning that, you know, it's not uh, my work alone as an individual, but with numerous organizations, networks, community leaders, mentors, uh, many of whom are here today. And I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude and acknowledgement uh, to the activists and leaders of the Adivasi Samiti, the Methanins, um, the Public uh, Public Health Resource Network, the People's Health Movement, uh, Jan Swastabhyan, Chopal, um, and of course the School of Public Health, um, uh, University of the Western Cape, um, and scholars associated with the various social movements and campaigns in India. And of course, my family and friends have supported me in this journey. Um, I, I want to share some of my experiences and learnings as an activist scholar. And I think Helen has already um, sort of outlined um, uh, part of my journey. And I feel really privileged to share this space because I think whether it's in terms of the institution that I'm in uh, with the, the School of Public Health and UWC and in the context of this award honoring uh, Professor Hevel. Um, I think institutions and people who really epitomize engage scholarship. Um, so I think starting out, you know, as a health activist, um, what I found that, you know, my work demanded evidence generation, it demanded research, writing and documentation. Uh, so in order to strengthen our arguments uh, as part of campaigns and movements, in order to uh, demand certain change, um, rational, provide rational for the demands that we were making. So in a sense, the topics, uh, you know, for evidence generation and, uh, you know, uh, uh, documentation, uh, I, you know, identified, uh, were identified as the need arose. And, uh, you know, also looking at the equity angle in terms of who was getting what, you know, how the schemes were being implemented, whether it was the health services, whether it were nutrition programs or any other social security programs, and then what was happening to the most vulnerable uh, and what are the reasons for it. So mapping the uh, structural determinants and the policies uh, leading to inequity. Uh, the other part uh, I think uh, I want to share about evidence generation uh, and, and, and research, uh, you know, how I started doing it was on you know, evidence being collected through local community action, whether it was monitoring of school meals, monitoring of health services, of availability of drugs, um, and also using some of these survey reports uh, in public litigation uh, and in government uh, petitioning. Um, as uh, sort of my work proceeded, I mean, I think uh, there was also a need felt for more documentation and theorizing of some of this uh, work that was happening. 
So one of it was documenting solutions or achievements, you know, providing learnings so that they could be replicated. For instance, uh, you know, uh, Helen spoke about the Mithanin Community Health Worker Program. So the work, uh, the you know, the Mithanins have done on action on social determinants of health, uh, you know, documenting some of that work so that, um, uh, you know, it, it provides inspiration and um, learnings for other community health worker programs. Uh, the other thing was, you know, theorizing some of these things, theorizing resistance, struggles, how do people get together, uh, how do campaigns uh, sort of uh, get together and sustain and make a change. So again, this was for, uh, you know, to show that uh, resistance and change is possible. Uh, so, uh, for example, some of the campaigns that I was involved in against privatization of health services. So documenting some of those, theorizing how it worked and, you know, uh, what are the learnings that we can take uh, for other campaigns. Um, and all, a lot of this work was also done at, uh, you know, different levels from the local to the global level. And I think uh, for me, I think it's important to point out that, uh, you know, all of it was really collaborative work. And I think when we talk about engaged scholarship, I think collaboration is really at the heart of it. It is not something, uh, you know, that you do on your own uh, as a kind of an individual. Um, so Helen has uh, sort of spoken to you about my PhD. And, uh, and I think that was the one time I had to really consciously navigate the space as an activist and scholar. And, uh, you know, starting from the topic uh, that I chose because it was through my activism and community work that I recognized uh, some of these questions that, uh, you know, that people, uh, I mean, uh, some of these problems that people were facing and the questions that I wanted to ask and build evidence uh, on. And, uh, and alongside, I was part of uh, People's Health Movement in India, JSA, that was, you know, uh, actively advocating for abandoning the scheme. Uh, so I guess my aim at that time was to provide robust and scientific evidence and knowledge of, you know, what people were actually experiences, uh, experiencing, because, you know, on the other side, you had, uh, as Helen said, uh, you know, a lot of uh, sort of public relation work in a sense going on about uh, how great this program was uh, and it was important uh, you know to um, ask those uh, questions and actually bring out the testimonials and the experiences uh, of people uh, whether it was regard to you know inequitable access to healthcare lack of financial protection the private sector dynamics that were going on uh, because uh, you know within the insurance scheme and also the kind of helplessness that patients and the families uh, face when trying to access health services under this scheme and um, and i think what was more important uh, at that time you know was uh, you know, reflexivity and rigor that uh, that one had to uh, engage with, and I don't. I I'm, I, I I want to say this because I think uh, you know, uh, in in many cases, uh, many scholars or students are a bit uh, you know defensive about um, you know get, uh, you know uh, acknowledging the activism side. But I think, I mean, I don't see that as a, uh, you know, weakness. I think it's just important to be transparent of, uh, you know, who you are and, uh, you know, um, and, and, and what you are. And I like to quote uh, Julian Tudor Hart's paper, you know, where he says that no, there's no evidence, uh, uh, you know, without ideology. So uh, as much as scientists want to believe, um, uh, want to make us believe otherwise, you know, uh, I think, you know, how, one uh, views the world, what is your worldview, your perspectives, uh, uh, you know, all uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, impact on the questions that you're asking and how you're asking those questions and how you're undertaking that research. Uh, so, uh, so, and here I would also want to highlight the importance of mentors, comrades and co-workers and community leaders from, uh, you know, uh, the People's Health Movement, the School of uh, Public Health, Indian social movements, organizations who really, you know, help to bring, uh, build and strengthen my beliefs. So uh, it helped me in a sense that, you know, whether it were beliefs of, uh, you know, that I had 
with regards to health equity or social justice or right to health or uh, you know the importance of public systems and services um, i think this was reinforced by them and i think anybody starting out i think it's really important to you know identify search for campaigns people organizations who can provide that support and you know many are there um, in this room itself um, so i i just i want to conclude uh, by uh, talking about some of the points in which uh, you know uh, with regards to why uh, you know, it is important for researchers to engage with activism and social movements. Uh, so activism, uh, you know, builds perspectives, beliefs, and helps to identify uh, relevant issues, helps you to, uh, you know, ask the relevant questions for research, and also helps to engage communities uh, and engage with communities for research. And uh, research needs, uh, needs social movements to make it relevant. Uh, you know, uh, social movements, uh, because social movements use research to make change, and also for accountability of the researcher, you know, I mean, uh, finally, I think for the research, it's important to ask, you know, why am I doing this research? Has it led to any change? And for whom, uh, you know, I mean, and change for whom? So I would argue that it is uh, also an issue of research ethics. And it's an, um, you know, ethical imperative that, uh, as researchers and academics, we engage with uh, activism uh, and social movements. And uh, finally, I just want to highlight some of the, uh, you know, uh, some of the current discourse that's happening. And I think when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, decolonization, and I, I mean, and 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 when you actually read uh, decolonial scholars, um, I think it's very clear that you know any talk of decolonization of public health of of curriculum uh, of our uh, you know education system um, has to uh, be uh, supportive of. Uh, you know, struggles and campaigns and social movements. And, uh, you know, it, there, there is, uh, I mean, within uh, decolonization, uh, you know, there is need to engage in activism as an essential element. Uh, the other thing uh, that uh, I want to talk about was, uh, you know, knowledge translation. And this is something that indigenous uh, scholars from Canada, Australia have been saying for a long time that, you know, knowledge cannot be disconnected or separated from uh, action. Uh, so I think it is very important, uh, you know, to practice uh, that. Um, uh, and, and, and that's why engaged scholarship uh, is extremely uh, significant. And finally, I want to end by saying that, you know, activism and academics or scholarship are really not contradictory to each other. They support each other, they build on each other. And uh, together, you know, we are able to, to ensure that there's real change uh, towards uh, equity and social justice. And um, so I'll, 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 end, I'll end my input here and thank you all again uh, very much. And I look forward to uh, listening uh, to my fellow pa panelists. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sulakshna. Um, really interesting reflections. I particularly like your reflection on there not being, being no evidence without ideology. I think being very aware and reflecting on the, the ethical and the political foundations of what we do and how we do it is crucially important. Um, so we had thought um, it would be really nice to connect um, Sulakshna's so work in India with some of the engaged scholarship that has been happening in locally here in South Africa, connecting the two continents. And we have invited two um, very, very renowned and very inspiring um, engaged scholars uh, from South Africa to, to now um, comment on and, and share their own reflections. Um, I first want to invite Dr. Vuyaseka Dubula. Um, many of us know her from her um, days uh, in leading and being an activist initially in the um, treatment action campaign in the early 2000s in the fight against uh, HIV AIDS. She has then uh, since been played various other roles in uh, Sonka Gender Justice. Uh, and other organizations. She is uh, currently doing her postdoc, postdoc fellowship at the Center for Civil Society at the University of the Western Cape, uh, University of um, KwaZulu-Natal. 
uh, where she also received her PhD not so long ago. Um, for your sake, if I could ask you to share your reflections with us. Thank you. Thank you, Uta. Uh, one thing I wanted to say was firstly, congratulations to Sulakshana for this amazing work that you do in India. And I could I resonate with you and your work at many levels. One of one who, who has had to walk the UR path of being an activist and uh, engaging in academia. And I think that's a very difficult struggle and I continue to navigate it. Uh, and I, we, can, we can sit over a cup of rooibos and, and tell our, tell, our tales and stories. The other is also being a health, a health activist, a human rights activist, but also being a woman who, who is in that highly political space. And often we forget that with, even within activism, there's a, a social hierarchy of whose voice is being heard. So congratulations on your award, very well deserved. Uh, and I can't think of anyone, I, I mean, I don't know your class, but you, your resume sounds amazing. Um, I also think that why it's important, as you are saying, that knowledge itself is political. And I think you placing your, your work and saying, I needed to theorize the work that we were doing. I needed to understand the work we were doing, documenting the work we were doing. For me, it places the voice of whom you are organizing with, of whom you are activists with at the center of knowledge production, but also activist-driven research to be recognized as important research because I think activists, obviously I'm a scholar activist. I am going to be very pro scholar activist in my inputs that we are driven by political commitment towards social justice. We are passionate about social justice. So our starting point in engaging in academia comes from the place of social justice. It comes from a place where we are actively engaged in communities towards us, you know, this aspiration of one day we will live in a just uh, a society, in a health equal society. And we're not just looking at it from a distance and we do not aim to be distant from the work we do and the research we do. And I think for your work tells that, that, that you know, example that you can walk the two paths. I also think that the importance of combining you actively being in the field and working in the community, organizing with, with the groups and community health workers, but at the same time, taking a step back and reflecting about the work that you do. Because I think if we don't do it as activists ourselves, often our knowledge is distorted. Often the stories of social movements is distorted because it's taken from a, a place where people are not actually being in the, in the engine room when the, the work happens. The, 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 the challenge about for me, which I don't know, maybe you can reflect one day, the issue of positionality and reflexivity and rigor for activists, my biggest challenge, and maybe you, you have experienced this, my biggest challenge was often my, my, my automatic pilot mode as an activist is get things done now. So we are so, action oriented and the results now and academia is very slow and you have to reflect and you really the rigor the systematic processes takes long and the theorizing takes long sometimes the movement itself leaves you behind because as you are sitting in the desk and theorizing the movement is far ahead some of the things you are studying and reflecting about they've already evolved I really struggled with that. Maybe it's, it was particular in, with TAC that I was, I, was, I was doing research with. And I, I felt that I was, I was very slow and I'm very frustrated many times. I'm not sure how you have managed uh, that dilemma. The other is, I, it took me a lot of time to understand that my work is value involved. Because in academia, there has been this indoctrination that you have to be objective. And I think also coming from an activist background, and obviously for me coming from a place where I'm HIV positive, I, at some point I had my own internal stigma of feeling like I have to really do my research in a particular way. I have to showcase my work in a particular way. It took me two years to just accept 
this is who you are. Do not lose who you are. And once I gave myself permission, I kind of embraced and I felt at home that I wasn't doing anything that wasn't me. I felt that I was embracing the challenge of doing research, but at the same time, also embracing who I was. I was an activist and I wasn't, I also needed to allow myself not to be changed by the process of doing research and do it in a particular way. So I like the fact that you are saying it's not a weakness to admit your conviction of being who you are, your positionality of being an activist. It is your strength. It's not a weakness. It is a way you are approaching your research. For me, I, I, I was actually blushing, I was like, exactly. We need to be preaching this to many activists, even public administrators of, or, or social servants who are doing research in, the work, in their work that they need to embrace this because I think we're going against the tide of many people who are believing that uh, research should be value free. Um, the last thing I wanted to share to, to, that I, I, I picked up from your inputs is that bread and butter for activists is how do we translate what we are researching into implementation? Because implementation for movement, it is a step towards achieving that health equity. It is a step in achieving social justice. So we, it, this doing research is not just an exercise of my academic career of, or my career path. It is a contribution towards changing people's lives, changing the conditions of many poor people, vulnerable people or, or in many countries where inequalities are high, that that for me is the most critical thing that I think any activist scholar shouldn't lose. And when, when you're saying knowledge translation, for me, it hit the nerve because I was like, every time we have to remind ourselves, why am I doing this PhD? What is it going to do? And what change is going to happen? For, for What am I contributing towards? Because sometimes often we can also forget. So I also wanted to say congrats, uh, Dr. Nandi. And one day I wish we could connect our struggles because they are very connected, but also connect at a, a, another level, being a woman in this space, that's highly political. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Vuseka. And I think, yeah, very important to emphasize that, that the role of women in the struggle has, plays a particularly important role. And I love the fact that you, you're emph emphasizing particularly, particularly the issue of the slowness of, slowness of academia versus the, the need to actually to take action, to actually translate things into change now. Um, that's something we can reflect on, hopefully can reflect on um, a bit further just now. I would also want, want to invite um, others to put questions in the chat already. Uh, lots of congratulations coming through, um, but please also make contributions and ask both uh, Sulakshna and the pan panelists as well. Um, and so I then want to invite um, Dr. Tracy Naledi as the um, second panelist. Uh, she's a colleague here from Cape Town. Um, she's a public health medicine specialist who has played many roles in, in the South African public health uh, sector, both in government, um, in, in NGOs, and also um, most recently um, in academia. She is presently deputy in Deputy Dean Health Services at the UCT Faculty of, Community, uh, of Health Sciences. Um, her public health work has focused on translation of research into policy and practice. So speaking to the same issue again, addressing health equity, inequity and strengthening health systems. Um, she's held multiple governance positions and is the founding chairperson of Tecano Atlantic Fellows for Health Equity in South Africa. Um, Tracy, can I hand over to you? Um, thank you very much, uh, Uta, and um, I, I feel a little bit intimidated following such um, wonderful uh, women, and congratulations, um, Salukshna Nandi, and uh, when I saw your name, um, I thought, am I seeing double, uh, is this a South African, um, because I'm sure you've been to South Africa many times, I'm sure you already know that uh, Nandi is the name of um, uh, Shaga, one of the kings of the Zulu nation, um, Shaga Zulu's um, uh, uh, kind of mom. And, and I think for me, um, I want to say that that 
is an indication of just how connected we are. Um, you know, and I was listening to you um, and I was reading about you. And uh, I think it just tells us that all our struggles are connected and our humanity is connected and our roots are connected. Um, and so congratulations, I, I feel like um, I, I've gained a, a sister virtually. And uh, like uh, Vuiseka said, I, I so hope that we will have an opportunity to, to connect and, and share notes and, and, and actually get to know one another. Thank you very much um, to Uta and Helen for, for inviting me. I, I think uh, Vuiseka has touched on many of the issues that I wanted to touch on. I just want to emphasize the one, which is around social accountability. Um, and I think as Uta is saying, I'm finding myself now in academia and uh, before, before this, most of my working life was um, in government where actually I was working on, as you have heard around translating um, research into policy and practice. And so for me, this is, you know, what we did in government, you know, wanting to um, make sure that what we are doing is evidence-based. But I think the values uh, within uh, academia are slightly different. And I so resonate with what you were talking about in terms of activism and, and academics and actually saying that, you know, they, 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 they are not a contradiction. Um, they are not dichotomous. Um, it's actually um, different sides of the same coin. Because quite frankly, if the academy is not rooted in the context of our communities, it is not responding to the needs of our communities, then what is the point? You know, and I'm finding um, that there is um, so much individualism where it is about um, the publications, that is what is valued. Um, the publications, the, the conference uh, um, attendance, uh, the profile that I have. And I think um, the Dean, uh, Prof Roda, put it very nicely in, in, in her uh, opening comments to say, you know, what is this knowledge for if it's not really for, 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 for transforming people's lives? So I think for us, the, 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 the challenge, and, and, uh, and I've been listening to your story and, 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 and reading that you, are, you, you come from a social work background, you know, so I think for us as academic institutions, it's around asking ourselves if we are really going to wait until we get people who are going to be postgraduate students who are then going to learn some of these theories and then go out and change the world or our students who are undergraduates are going to be activists by accident or who are going to be activists, you know, uh, in, in whichever way, um, are we being intentional about making sure that we multiply the likes of Usulukshna Nai Diabo Viseka and many other activists in our way of being, in our way of doing as academic institutions? And I think um, as I was getting into this job, of course, I'm coming from one section to the other, you kind of read around and hear what kind of frames um, some of these sectors. And you know, one publication that really resonated with me was the, it's quite an old publication, was the Lancet Commission that was looking at reforming um, health uh, professionals education and was uh, talking about um, these three phases of, of, of educating um, health workers and talked about the first phase being really, you know, um, early on about really trying to embed what we do in the, early in the 20th century in science. And as you can imagine, that was important at the time that our curriculum are very much science-based and moved on to a kind of mid-century, which is very much around outcomes-based education. But where we are now, I think this is what you're talking about, this third phase of really being about an accountable academy that is accountable to society. And, and so when we, when we try and then multiply, um, you know, can you imagine how many students come through universities as undergraduates, and I'm talking in particularly around health workers and students who are health workers. 
if we were able to create health workers that as they leave the institutions are already kind of prepared to be activists when they get onto be it the shop floor into communities that they themselves understand that their jobs are very much about changing people's lives, not necessarily just to give them medication and treatments as we treat them from a curative perspective, but to understand that activism is part and parcel of delivering healthcare actually. And that activism is about ensuring that what we are doing in our communities, we advocate for issues of prevention of social determinants, et cetera, some of the things, the work that you've been working on. But then also we make sure that we advocate to change the health system. I was very heartened by some of the work that you've been doing around universal health coverage. And, and as you are aware, our country is on a journey also trying to, to get there around universal health coverage and universal health care and around making sure that truly as we educate, as we build our students from day one, that is the objective. The objective is about how do we, um, how do we ensure population health, that everything that we are doing, we are advocating for population health, and also how do we ensure for a health system that is equitable, that is effective, that is efficient, and actually delivers for the most vulnerable. And so I think you are very much ahead of your time. And I think as, as the academy, we really need to think about how we are intentional about, uh, about um, about, about um, developing these kinds of cadres of workers that are out there such that it's not something special to be an activist, but it is part of the cause. It is what is expected of all of us. Um, and I also have like kind of many questions and, and things that I, I would love if we had a way in a conversation that we'd want to reflect on. And the one is about power. And I think, um, as we, as we become more educated, more knowledgeable, um, you know, there is the tension that, 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 that kind of emanates where, you know, uh, the communities that we come from and just making sure that we don't leave them behind. And I was, I'm listening to your story, reading about you. I was actually so thrilled and amazed by how you seemed to have really manage that tension so beautifully and being able to traverse um, all of these spaces and all of these sectors almost seamlessly. And, you know, it's one of the things that I, I really was, was interested in, in hearing your thoughts about, about, you know, how you got that right, you know. And the other reflection that I had is that, you know, and I think um, we said I touched on it as well about the personal, you know, um, we are women, we are mothers, etc. And just balancing that as well. And, and, and also, as we are working as activists, as health workers, working on changing the world, not forgetting ourselves, and how do we balance that as well, and making sure that we change ourselves as well. Um, you know, so, you know, it would have been great to also hear those reflections to say, you know, how do we make sure that as we are going forward and changing the world, we don't forget ourselves, we make sure that our cups are full, um, we are well, um, because I think as activists, um, there, there is a huge issue of burnout, the issue of um, you know, mental health disorders, et cetera, because we are so focused on doing things for others and, and, and doing things for the world and just how we, we actually can do that um, for ourselves as well. But I do see that, um, you know, we, we, we have gone a bit over time, but I would absolutely love to have a conversation with you and Vuisek and others over coffee and reflect on these wonderful um, experiences and, and your insights that you shared with us. Um, just to thank you very, uh, very much, UWC, for inviting me to give my reflections and congratulations, uh, Dr. Nandi. Well-deserved um, award. Thank you. Thanks so much, Tracy. And I do think um, we should one day, maybe next year or the year after, we will have opportunity to create that 
forum face to face to have these conversations. I think they really they they're really really important and very useful. But I think we do have a bit of time. Maybe um, Sulakshna, do you want to reflect a little bit on the questions that Tracy has raised and also Vyaseka have raised around? How do we train in support of activism? How do you try and remain yourself? Uh, yeah, remain yourself, um, who you are. Um, how do you balance the position, different position, positionalities, and look after yourself in all of that? And I know you also. You're a mother. You're a woman. How, how do you how do you juggle all of this? Yeah, I think. I mean, first of all. Uh... Second, Tracy, I mean, thank you so much uh, for your insights. And uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's really wonderful. And yeah, I just want to come over and meet you guys. Um, so um, I, I think I'll just start with some of the points that Yuseka, uh was, uh, uh, you know, pointing out. I think one of the things uh, was about, you know, academia is a very um, uh, sort of it's a slow process of publishing stuff and all. And so one of the ways, um, you know, I sort of try to uh, work um, on that is to uh, actually simultaneously also, uh, you know, like write in blogs or in media and, you know, uh, media articles, other popular literature uh, stuff that I was getting out uh, of my PhD, you know, material. Uh, for example, there was a cartoon book which uh, comrades of uh, People's Health Movement made, which uh, came out of one of the case studies that, uh, you know, I was doing. Um, and um, I think, uh, you know, one of the, uh, I mean, I think the other thing that I think both of you uh, really highlighted, and uh, I did not highlight as much in my uh, talk but i think it's very important it's about you know the knowledge uh, generation also you know what kind of knowledge uh, is being uh, sort of um, prioritized or uh, you know put as the uh, you know the perfect uh, kind of knowledge and i think as education institutions as academics as activists i think we have a lot of work to do on that and in fact um, uh, you know uh, in sort of the next uh, I mean, going forward, that's something I really want to work on in terms of, uh, you know, producing, I mean, uh, having things produced in a way which is really not uh, only an academic, uh, you know, publication, but, you know, would be given as much of significance as importance uh, as an academic publication uh, in a peer reviewed journal, because I think unless we do that, uh, you know, this uh, inequality uh, between, uh, you know, the different kinds of knowledge uh, uh, will uh, continue to exist and that's, uh, you know, really uh, not fair. Um, I think the other thing is about, I think, the educational institutions and the curriculum. And uh, I've been very fortunate to be, you know, associated with uh, the School of Public Health at uh, University of Western Cape. And some of the, and so the teachers and the mentors uh, that I've had have actually uh, you know, um, epitomize this kind of activism, academic work, and also, uh, you know, others from the people's health movement who are both in academia, but are also able to play the role of an activist. So I think uh, learning from them and getting uh, their uh, mentorship and seeing how they transact uh, things, you know, uh, navigate the spaces has really, uh, you know, helped me uh, to, to uh, do that too. And I completely agree, Tracy, that it's so important for us uh, to see what we are teaching in our curriculum and also in a professional work. So, for example, a nurse, uh, you know, if she's being taught, uh, you know, um, so she needs to be uh, taught that it's also okay to, you know, um, uh, talk about inequality or, you know, um, demand certain things uh, that is not going uh, uh, well or, um, uh, you know, uh, raising her voice uh, for against any injustice. So both uh, within academic institutions, but also within professions, I think uh, this line between activism and academia and, and really, I think the way to bridge this line is to just keep talking about and uh, think about social justice and uh, equality. I think that is finally what is going to bring us uh, on board, um, uh, you know, uh, whether it is uh, different words. Um, so, and uh, I mean, and, and, and there was a question about uh, my, my personal life and how I deal with it. I'm, um, 
yeah, I, I just love my work. So, uh, and I'm very privileged that I have uh, this kind of, kind of support that, you know, allows me to keep doing my work. So my family uh, or, uh, the, you know, and um, others um, in my extended circle um, are always there. And um, I, I have uh, prioritized my work a lot and I really love doing that. And I'm again, you know, not, um, um, uh, again, not defensive about that. And I think it's uh, my children also understand that and my family also understands that. Um, so I, um, yeah, I haven't really faced much of a uh, problem in that uh, sense. I'm, I'm very privileged. I'm privileged in terms of uh, the, the employment that I've had that has, uh, you know, uh, um, enabled me to do a lot of this work. So I think that's, again, a privilege that I need to talk about uh, up front. And, and, and many people do not have that privilege, you know, whether as an activist or as an academic or as a, a professional uh, 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 a worker. Uh, but uh, um, so, so I think we need to uh, find those opportunities and create those opportunities that, you know, within which people can be what they want to be. And, uh, and I think uh, that's another, I think, responsibility that, uh, you know, people like me who are very privileged also, um, um, you know, have. Um, and um, yeah, so I think, um, uh, and, and the other thing is, I mean, I hope I have changed in my life and I want to keep changing. I mean, I think introspection uh, especially is very important. And I, I mean, as a woman, whenever I think of the troubles I have <laughs> within my profession, network or as a person from the global south you know when I think of any kind of um, the, you know inequality that I'm facing uh, from some you know in the global north uh, the you know the I think the point is to just recognize that but also think of people who had it worse so I think recognizing my privilege that and and you know uh, recognizing that um, um, intersectionality that, you know, being a woman, but still I'm in a particular, I'm from a particular class and I'm from a particular caste and which gives me a lot of privilege. Uh, so it really makes me then not really want to uh, dwell on my situation as much, but actually look at how the, you know, uh, I mean, how, you know, the, the, the other aspects and, and the other women, the kind of social inequality and injustice uh, that people are facing. Uh, so I, yeah, so I, I think that also helps me um, to sort of keep working and not really be very, um, dwell on too much of the kind of injustice maybe I'm facing, because I think that is um, much less um, than what most people um, in this world face. So, um, yeah, and that really keeps me going to make it better, uh, yeah, for everyone. Thanks. Thanks so much, Sulakshana. And I think it, yeah, it's important to also be aware that in many, in many respects, we are actually quite privileged. And tonight we've been enormously privileged to have you with us and a very big congratulations. We've also, it's been an enormous privilege to have both Tracy and for your sake are part of this conversation. So thank you very much to all three of you. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask everybody to put on their videos just now, but before I do that, I would ask our Head of Institutional Advancement, um, Anish Singh, um, to give a vote of thanks. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to extend this uh, vote of thanks to all of you who have been here this, after, this evening. Firstly, I'd like to extend our appreciation to Ms. Diana Yak and the Moorberger Foundation for their continuous support since 2013. I'd like to also thank the Dean of the Community and Health Sciences Faculty, Professor Roda, for her opening address. Prof. Helen Schneider, Dr. Valdekadin Amde, and Dr. Sulakshana Nandi for developing the program. The School of Public Health Events and Digital Support team, especially Ms. Tamlin Peterson, Ms. Zianda Mwanda, and Ms. Kanita Ernst the UWC Media Office for the continuous coverage of the event, the staff and students of the School of Public Health for their enthusiasm and hard work to make, this, make the school a place of inquiry and action for social justice as Jake Scargill envisaged for the school 30 years ago. Thanks also to Prof. Uta Lehman 
for, for her leadership of the School of Public Health. Nandi, before I end this uh, vote of thanks, I want to extend my congratulations to you. I don't know if everybody knows the meaning of your name, but your name means joy. And I think you brought some joy to this event this evening. So congratulations once again on receiving this award and for your wonderful presentation as well. Thanks also to all of you in the audience for your attendance and participation. Keep safe and keep well. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Anish. Uh, and yes, thank you again for a really, really important conversation. I think it's a conversation we must have a lot more of. Um, and as I said, maybe we will have opportunity soon to have this conversation face to face uh, here in Cape Town at the school, um, hopefully. Um, I would like to invite everybody now to put their, to become a little bit less uh, formal, to just put their videos on to say hello to each other. Um, there are a number of people in, in the audience who know each other and haven't seen each other for a long time. Um, you can also put your microphones on, say hello. Um, if you want to say anything to Sulakshna, please feel free to do so. <laughs> thanks. That was uh, thanks to this Very mm. nice to see Maria Zuniga from very far away being with us. Good to see you. Congratulations, Dr. Sulakshna from Linda. Viva PHM. Viva. Congratulations. Yes, Viva PHM. Very good to see. Thanks, Linda. Linda, Mafu in Geneva. Show your face. Mafu, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Congratulations, Linda. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Selekshana, for this nice presentation. It's really Meeting nice. Some yeah? Lovely to see Hello. some other Hello. alumni with us. Hello. Congratulations. From Nigeria, Sam Chaba. To see you, Sam. Thank you. Right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, we will have hopefully have another event next year, and hopefully it will be face to face. We will see. But this is also it is a wonderful opportunity to actually connect across continents and the world. So thank you very much. Congratulations to Sulakshna. Thank you very much for your second, Tracy. Thanks to Helen and thanks to the School of Public Health team. Have a good evening and stay safe. Thank you. Thanks, bye, -bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.